So the first thing to do is to go to the website, of course, which is HTTPS gen 2org and this is the landing page you'll get. And first thing you probably want to do is to go to the Get Started page, which is either this button here or this link here. So I'll just click on that there. And it tells you what to do here. It says first thing you need to do is to boot into a live environment. And it says they offer um, environments, various environments for you to boot into. Um, and well, we can we can go through that because I, th I believe this part is actually in the handbook, even though it's not part of the installation. It, it does guide you through how to set it up. And then it says to follow the installation instructions. So ready to go, just click on this Gen2 handbook link here. And here's the main page for the Gen2 handbook. And here you can see there's the various different architectures that the handbook has been uh, customized for. So if you are following this through, but you want to build for an AMD 64, i.e. a 64-bit Intel-based processor, then you need to click on here. Um, and obviously if you happen to have one of these other architectures then they're, they're obviously available. So I'm going to be doing 32-bit so it's this x86 link that I need to click on. And you get this like contents page here with different sections so all of the installation of Gen 2 is in this first bit. Then there's a second part which tells you how to actually use Gen 2 when you've got it up and running. It tells you how to maintain it and so on. And there's more information here about Portage, which is the um, Gen 2 package manager. There's a bit here about Gen 2 network configuration. It should all work, um, especially if you're using a wired network. Uh, I, I really wouldn't advise setting up with um, wireless unless you're confident with it. I'd, I'd always advise advise to avoid wireless at all costs if you can. It's, it seems to be a bit of a kludge the way it's been put together. Um, I don't know if it's a Linux specific thing or if it's just generally the way the hardware has been put together but certainly with Linux in the past there's been problems with drivers and configuration and so on and it's just nasty it is whereas networking's always worked pretty much out of the box in Linux so uh, like I say, unless you're really um, expert on Wi-Fi, or, and particularly Wi-Fi in Linux, I would just stick with the network, get a, get a wire, plug it in, just plug it in for the installation, get your Wi-Fi going once you've got Gen 2 going. Um, I think it'll be a lot less, a lot less pain involved. So assuming you've got the network all plugged in and ready to go, we can start by going to this first link and this will just take us through as I say setting up the computer to get a, an environment a bit like if you followed my videos on Linux from scratch how we need a host system to boot from so it's kind of like a chicken and egg situation you can't just get a distribution and install it because we're compiling we need something to host that compiling environment so we need we need something to begin with um, so this explains how the handbook's laid out, what the different steps are, different chapters. And it tells you where to go in case you get problems. There's these links to the forums. The Gen2 forums are very helpful. I've used them once or twice before. Um, there's some facts there. Um, there's an article for of facts as well. So it says choosing the installation media. So it tells you what the hardware requirements for. So as you can see, we can actually install this on a 486 because that's the minimum hardware that you can install Linux on these days. Um, the Athlons are 686, so we can use the live D live DVD or the minimal CD as a host. The live DVD is a little bit out of date now. I think it was last updated in 2016. It was always an ad hoc thing that they did, um, but they did used to update it every year or two, but as I say, it hasn't been updated for uh, approximately four years or more now. Um, I think you'd be able to use it as a, as a host. Uh, the only thing 
I'm not sure about is the compatibility of the X4 file system. Um, I think if you were to format a partition using the uh, E2FS progs on that live DVD, obviously you won't be getting the latest version. I think there may be some features missing from that older version, but don't quote me on that. If that's important to you, I'd, I'd just check that out to see if there is anything important that's that is missing from that older version. Um, but apart from that, I think I'm pretty sure it should work. Um, you get the advantage of a graphical environment there with that. Um, so you might want to use that. You can use any other distribution. The only caveat is if you don't use a Gen 2 distribution, there are one or two little utilities which help the installation along the way, um, which by using another Linux distribution, you would have to delay that part of the configuration until you've got the Gen 2 system up and running or maybe work around it manually. But I'll I'll try and remember to point those out if you are using another distribution. But what I'm going to show you here is to uh, install Gen 2 using a minimal CD and doing it remotely. So as I sort of hinted at the beginning of this video that I'm assuming that you're, you're going to be building on a spare machine, an old machine that you want to bring back to life and use it for something. And therefore you've got access to a more modern machine. Um, and I'll be showing how to access the 32-bit machine from the modern machine using SSH. To, to, so it means also we can got, we've got access to the uh, graphical environment, a bit like what I've got here at the moment. I've got a terminal up, which I'm going to be using to, to connect into the 32-bit machine, and I've got a graphical browser up where we can copy and paste commands in, into the terminal. The commands aren't particularly onerous. It, um, if you do want to do everything on the minimal CD on the machine, that is quite possible. Um, GPM, the uh, mouse program where you can copy and paste text, is available on the minimal CD. So you'll be able to switch virtual terminals, copying and pasting. There is um, links, a links browser, L-I-N-K-S. I'm not sure if the L-Y-N-X version of Lynx is available, but certainly the L-I-N-K-S version is available um, to connect to the internet. So you can actually do everything on the machine that you're building on. Um, it just be a little bit more onerous with the constant switching between terminals and um, the sort of primitive copy and paste that GPM offers. But well, despite the fact to say it's primitive, it is fully functional. Um, so that, that is quite possible. So as you can see, um, i486 or later for the minimal CD which I'll be using, so we're well within that specification. Memory, yep, we've got 2 gigs, so that's fine. I've got 500 gig drive, so that's fine. And swap, it says it needs at least 256, so we'll, we'll bear that in mind when we create the partitions. And it's, there's a link here to a project about the X86. Just have a quick look at that. So it looks like it's um, what their goals are and about keeping 32-bit compatibility going and the bug tracker and so on. So if you're interested in getting a bit more involved in that, that's the page to go to. So yeah, it describes the installation media here. I believe this minimal installation CD gets updated once a week, so it's virtually bang up to date. You'll get the latest versions of all the software on there. Um, there's various tools for um, installation, um, you know, things like Smart Mon tools, HD Palm, LSI, uh, LS, is it no, uh, what's it called? PCI utils, uh, USB utils, all those sort of things are on there to help you um, with identifying hardware and so on. Um, which all, is all useful for later on when we build a kernel. Um, it says here about the live DVD um, that they occasionally build. Um, it then goes into mentioning about stages. So, bang, already we're talking about stage three tarball. You're probably thinking, what's stage one and stage two? I wouldn't 
worry about it too much. It's kind of historical. Um, I came into Gen 2 when I think you had to install Stage 2. Um, there wasn't a Stage 1 or it was already pre-built or something as far as I remember. And very soon after that, it was just Stage 3 that you installed. So I'm, I'm not too sure about the history of that, but I believe what it is, they've gone state straight to stage three as it gets rid of a lot of the complexity of building up a gen two system i think the stage earlier stages were a bit like linux from scratch where you pre-built an environment and then use that pre-built environment to build the final environment which is what stage three is <clears throat> or partly stage three um so i wouldn't worry about it too much basically stage three is a um a minimal environment that we can shoot into and then from that environment we build our gen 2 system and that stage 3 is our gen 2 system it's just got bits missing all we do is add to it so we've got the host that we boot into we get this stage 3 extract it we shoot into that stage 3 and then we configure and add a few tools to that and that's what is the final gen 2 system that we'll be using So then it says about obtaining the media. So this is the bit where we obtain the minimal installation. I'm not going to show you how to do this. It does describe it very well. It describes how to get hold of it. You could do this on your other machine if you are going to use a modern machine like I am into um, SSH into the 32-bit machine. The one thing you need to be aware of is that you get the right version so um, let's go to these links uh, just to point out the one you need for the 32 bit, 32 bit. Yeah, so you can see there's two sections here. There's the 32 bit, uh, sorry, 64 bit section, and there's a 32 bit section. So the bit we're interested in at the moment is the minimal CD. So x86, it's 32 bit, and the minimal installation CD. Don't worry about the stage three we'll be dealing with that a little bit later on but for now that's the link you want you may also want to go onto this minimal installation cd link which gives you a directory listing when it comes up i think it actually looks for a mirror close by to you so that might be why it's taking a little while uh, looks like it's taking me some chinese one for some reason Yeah, let me try that again. It's, it's certainly not local to me. Right, okay. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, it's taking me to this Oregon State University. This is a good um, website to keep hold of. They've got lots of mirrors of, um, or, or rather, they've got mirrors of lots of distributions. You can see they've got the most popular ones at the top here, but um, I use this for Linux from scratch if I need to get hold of a package that I can't easily get hold of from the Linux from scratch website. So this is, yeah, I'd, I'd recommend bookmarking this if you uh, want to delve around a little bit more into Gen 2 and other linkses and so on. Right, so, yeah, the one we want, you can just check the name of it, that it's got x86 in the name. Definitely don't want it to say AMD64, and you want the minimal ISO so that's the ISO you want there and you might want to download these digests as well to do a verification um, on that ISO when it's downloaded and, and the book describes all that these stage 3 files will be coming back to them um, as say as part of the installation um, so as I say it says I, I, I'm not going to show this as I've already said but I'll just quickly skim through and point out a few things so it does say to verify the downloaded file, and that's a good idea, just to be sure it's not got corrupted or worse, um, got been tampered with. Um, it tells you how to burn it, suggests tools for doing that, and even doing it on Windows. And then also, um, yeah, burn it with Linux if you're uh, a Linux user already. So just to quickly point out that 
um, yes, you can copy that to a CD or you can copy it to a USB stick as well, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure you can. I'm pretty sure I've done that. You can. I'm not even sure if it does actually mention that there, does it? No, it just mentions about burning it onto a CD, but I'm pretty sure you can um, copy it. I think it's a hybrid boot, so you can copy it to USB and it will work. I, I know I've got a USB stick here with um, an older version of the minimal boot on it, and it does it does boot fine. Um, I don't know why they don't describe it here, actually. Um, so you'd have to, if you did want to boot from a USB stick, you'd have to find out how to do that if you're not sure. Um, but I will be booting from a CD that I've created with a minimal drive on. It's slightly slower, I think, but the reason why I've done the CD is because of the hardware. When um, AMD released the chipset for this system, which I think is called Iron Gate, I think it's codename Opus, but it's name was iron gate 768 i think it is the usb ports were bugged and they disabled the usb ports and so consequently the hardware manufacturers that use the um chipset i think it was a northbridge chipset that was disabled uh, that, that was buggy um they shipped a separate usb card to make up for it um but the one i've the motherboard I've got is a later version where they have actually added on a separate USB um, chip, if you like. Um, but even then, it's slightly iffy. It sort of it has its moments. Um, I've I've got at least one, if not two, USB keys that plug in and just don't seem to work very well. Um, so because of that, I, like I say, I will be booting from CD-ROM, so it's a little bit slower, unfortunately, and there may be pauses occasionally where the CD-ROM is accessed. Um, but, yeah, it's just one of these things. It's old hardware again. Um, if 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 you, like me, who's used hardware over the years, you'll know that things have got easier and easier. Uh, things are a lot simpler, and you don't realise it until you come back to this older hardware, how, how awkward things were, and how much work it was to configure things, but that's another story.